Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. TGIF. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. So far, so good. We have electricity. All is good. I'm, I'm afraid to say anything. I don't want to jinx it. But so far, so good. We have electricity. So we're going to plan on doing a listening practice, a TOEFL listening practice this morning. We'll start at 8.15, like we've done in the past. If you want to download the audio, I've uploaded it to the temp folder. Okay, so you can go in and download it at this time if you... If it works better for you with uh, with the internet connection, I'm going to play it over the internet as well. I'll play it in our online class, as always. Um, I'm going to share my screen. We'll have a few minutes here. So, um, what I want to do today is, after our listening practice, I want to review all the homework assignments that we've had. Um, some of you are still missing your final team reflection, which is needed in order to receive a grade for your first performance task. So we'll clarify any doubts that you have about what to do. Check teacher ease, right? We'll have basically the rest of the class today to answer your questions give you time in class to complete the assignments, and also if everything else is completed and you haven't completed your next episode, your podcast episode, you can take that time to do that as well. We'll have our fourth episode uh, for this week. Okay, so we're going to continue. Hopefully you're listening to your podcast every, every day. Hopefully you've chosen a topic that you're interested in and you're getting a lot of good ideas from the podcast that you're listening to. That's the idea, it's that you're listening every day and getting ideas. What do I want to talk about, right, from what I'm listening to? And then at the end of the week, based on what you've listened to, then create your own podcast about what you listen to, what you think about it, right? Uh, maybe you compare and contrast certain points that you, you've been listening to. Maybe you want to create a problem solution scenario in your podcast. You want to pose a problem and then maybe offer a solution. Okay. Remember to avoid reading anything. Try not to read anything. Even if someone says something or you even find it online, paraphrase. That is, put it into your own words what someone else has said. Okay, that's a very good exercise. It's good practice uh, when speaking in any language is to take someone else's idea and you put it into your own words. And then you offer your own opinion, your own uh, perspective on whatever it is that you're talking about. All right, so I want you to be really purposeful when you create your podcast. That is, I want you to have a purpose in what why you're creating your episode. Okay, again, problem, solution. Maybe you want to compare and contrast. Maybe you want to talk about how something was in the past and now you want to talk about how it is currently. So it's, it's organized maybe by time chronologically, right? Think about how you want to organize your ideas. You can use a graphic organizer. You can write out a simple outline. But don't just go into your podcast without being prepared, right? Be prepared to talk about your ideas in an organized fashion. Um, all right, any, any questions about the, the podcast themselves? We haven't really talked a lot about them. Um, anybody have any comments or questions about how to deal with your podcast or or anything that related to your your podcast episodes how many minutes tiene que durar okay it needs to last like last week i think the last two weeks about between four and four and a half minutes okay i think at this point let's try to keep it from four to four and a half minutes um for this week okay thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome 
Any other questions, my friends? Uh, the reflection comment in our YouTube video of the task uh, have to be individually or in team? Individually. So here's the thing. It's, it's in teams and it's also individual. It's both. So what do I mean by this? Okay, what do I mean by this? The first step in offering a team reflection is for the team to get together and say, okay, how did we do? Which aspects do we want to talk about? Okay. And I, prov I provided that Word document that had a lot of key points to think about when you were creating your video. But there might be some others that came up, right? Just different aspects. It could be about your pronunciation. It could be about how you prepared Right? And you can talk about things that went well for your team. You can also talk about challenges that you faced. Okay, it's a, it's a reflection. It's basically evaluating your performance. So when after you talk as a team, then the idea is to decide as a team who is going to talk about what in terms of the evaluation so that you're not all talking about the same thing. Okay, so maybe someone talks about how you... Uh, did well with pronunciation. Maybe another team member talks about how you worked well together in organizing your ideas, right? But the idea is that each of you upload a comment in YouTube as a reflection, but that you don't talk about the same thing, that you talk about different aspects of your performance, and the only way to do that, that I know of, is to talk about it first as a team. To say, okay, who's going to talk about what? Okay, you're going to talk about this, these things. You're going to talk about these points. And I'll talk about these points. Okay? And then each one of you goes into the YouTube video and add your comment uh, as a text, right? Basically just a text comment. And I think we looked at an, an example. Team 11, I think, they did a really good job from the very beginning uploading their um, uploading their comments, okay? So you can look at their uh, video and their comments kind of as an example. But I encourage everyone to really be specific as you can in your evaluation. Try to think about specific aspects of maybe how you presented your visuals, maybe how you organized your ideas, and so on. Okay, teacher. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? <laughs> no. No, teacher. Teacher, where I can find the, the audio? Um, the audio from, I'm sorry, which audio? Uh, from the TOEFL? It should be in the, the, uh, the temp. Let me open up my, the temp folder. So if you go into teams under general, under files, there should be a folder called temp, T-E-M-P. And it should be there. TOEFL Listening 4. It's an MP3. Uh, yes. Yeah, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, you're welcome. Um, I want to throw out a quick suggestion. I know this is not a grammar class, but um, I've I received some questions from some students about uh, grammar, and I want to extend the invitation to everyone. If anyone wants to schedule time with me, uh, if you have questions about other aspects of your class, uh, just let me know. All right. I'm, I'm open to scheduling some time with you uh, if you need additional assistance. Okay. Now, uh, talking about verb tenses, when I teach verb tenses, I think one of the easiest ways to do it, because I'm kind of a visual uh, learner myself, I like to see things. So there are a series of images that I really like that I think are great for learning all of the verb tenses. And if you're looking at my screen here, um, they look very similar to this format. Okay, let me open up another example. There are individual file uh, images just like this for 
all of the verb tenses, but you have to kind of dig, you have to look for them. Okay, it's not, I don't think I've found them yet in one central location, although they probably are um, at some web page somewhere. But this is what I like about this format. First, it tells you at the top the name of the tense. Okay, again, you can find images like this for each of the verb tenses. And then it shows you the form. Okay, so it shows you kind of a formula how you form that particular verb tense. Okay, so I, I really like that. It has a lot of good examples. And then below, this is great. This has on one side the usage, right? So one thing is how to form the verb tense, but another thing is to actually know when to use this verb tense. So it gives you an explanation. And many of these verb tenses, they have multiple, more than one usage. And so in this example, you see there are three different usages and they have examples for each of the usage. So you've got examples, you've got different usages for that particular verb tense, and you have the form. And what I would do if I were you, if you're really wanting to review the, all the verb tenses, I would print out each of the verb tenses, each one of these images that are similar to this, and begin reviewing and use this as a study guide when you're actually using the verb tenses. Okay, so see if you can find all of these for each of the verb tenses. I know they exist because I've used them in class myself, but you need to try to find them. And again, maybe there's a website that has all of these someplace. I didn't really look this morning, um, but he like here's another one present continuous tense. So you get the form. The usage, one, two, three, four, five, six different usages for this one verb tense. Okay, this is what makes learning the verb tenses a little bit difficult, right? Is sometimes you have a lot of different usages. And obviously examples here off to the right. Okay, so if this helps, you know, and of course if you find other images, right, that help you right learn the the different verb tense is fine but i like this because it has the form and the usage right and you're probably going to be tested on both on both of those right not just how to form it but how do you you know when do you use it how do you use it okay so maybe uh, take a look at this guys if you're in your grammar class especially if you're reviewing the verb tenses and uh, we'll be Obviously, talking about different verb tenses in our our class, we'll we'll be practicing speaking in the future and in the past. We haven't really got into it yet, but we will. And so, I think it's a good idea if you haven't already, is to try to find these images for the different verb tenses. Okay, and I think that'll I think that'll help. All right, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we're going to start here in a few minutes. If you haven't already, make sure that you have opened up on, in your browser the TOEFL review. Okay, you should be able to access that from our uh, Microsoft Teams post. I think I posted it here. It's right here. Okay, so click on this link, and this should take you to the TOEFL page. It should open up at 8.15, should allow you to have access. So we'll get started here in just a moment. It's 8.15, go ahead and refresh your browser, see if you can now access, you should be able to open up now the TOEFL listening number four. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, teacher. Great. I'll wait just, uh, I don't know, maybe another minute just to make sure everybody is able to open up the TOEFL listening review. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, the audio. And let's begin. All right, guys, take a look uh, at your 
responses and make sure they're complete and go ahead and submit your responses at this time. All right, guys, a uh, couple of some vocabulary, some phrases that were mentioned in the the, uh, the review, in the TOEFL review. Uh, and I want to spend just a few minutes on a couple of these. One, one of the phrases is, get this. For example, I could say something like, Get this. I heard in the news this morning that Trump had COVID. He got the COVID virus. Get this. What What does that mean? Get this. Or when would you use it? What do you think? Like I see. I see. Or I hear. Okay. Yes. Or I hear. All right. Any any other ideas? Anybody else? Mm, it would be like, mm, check this out. All right. Check this out. Okay. That's an, also another idiomatic expression. Um, how would you literally explain without using another f example of figurative language to say, get this or why, or under what kind of circumstance would you use this phrase? Get this. Um, I think that it's like, um, pay attention to what is your, like your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's like, hey, pay attention. I've got something really important to say. Like, you you won't believe this. It's like, you won't believe this. Get this, right? So it's not, it's almost like drawing attention, trying to get someone's attention to, to really pay attention to what you're about to say because maybe it's something surprising, shocking, right? Something out of the ordinary, so it's a little bit stronger than I, you know, I see. It means that, but it's actually stronger than that to say, hey, I got something really important to say. Get this. Okay, very common. Um, this one's probably obvious. Now, I'm going to write it phonetically, gotta run, but this is not how you actually spell it. You would spell it like uh, I... Have got to run, right? So I'm going to write got to run, okay? But that's obviously not a word. You would say I have got to run or you could say I. it means I have to run, right? Maybe somebody will say I have to run or I got to run. What does that mean? I need to go. Mm -hmm. Or I need to leave. I need to go. I need to leave, okay? I got to run. Uh, if something goes down the drain, what does that mean? Something goes down the drain. What would be something that could go down the drain? Something that this didn't, like, work. Okay, something that didn't work something that doesn't work anymore maybe it's or maybe something um you know you, a grade if you don't keep up with the homework your grade could go down the drain something that uh gets worse or it even could be something that is so bad that it can't you can't get it back it went down the drain like it's over something's it's over right it's not uh it's not good anymore there's another one that I heard. Goofing off. Goofing off. It's a phrasal verb. You could even call somebody a goof, a goofball. <laughs> a goofball. What does that mean? Um, something that is like dummy and likes to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're playing around, goofing off. You'd say, hey, 
when you guys are teachers to your kids, hey, stop goofing off. Maybe the little kids playing around. Stop goofing off, right? Oh, you're a goofball. It means you're just kind of a like a class clown. You're a goofball. Mm. This what this sentence was said, I think, as well. I went to the stacks. I went to the stacks. What does that mean, stacks? I went to the stacks. And I think they were, in what context? Do you remember from the uh, TOEFL questions what the context was when they mentioned this? I don't know if it means like I go to the problem. Like I go straight to the problem. Mm, he, this actually is not figurative. This word stacks in this context is actually a literal meaning. Okay, so... It, do you remember the, the context, where they were when this was said? I think I remember this correctly. Where were they? Anybody remember? It's kind of early on in the, in the audio. Mm. No. I think they were in the library. If I remember right, I think they were in the library and somebody said, I, I went to the stacks. So if you're in the library and you go to the stacks, what do you think the stacks are? Pues, bueno, perdón, pero se refiere como la pila de libros de la, li, de, ahí de la biblioteca, ¿no? Mm -hmm. It's like a, a database in general, right? It's kind of a, a database or where uh, you can find all of the books. It's like a reference. Okay, so, um, you know, depending on if we're talking electronic or back in the day when everything was physical, right, you would actually, you could go to the stack section and search for a book. And it was kind of like an index where you could find books. But generally speaking, stacks refers to a database. Okay, and... Uh, I've heard it mainly in terms of a database or a reference that is not necessarily digital. I don't think I've heard of the term used in a digital situation, okay? But it's kind of an older word that is still relevant, especially in the case of libraries that still have uh, stacks where you could actually go in and flip through cards and find different books, Okay. Let's see, what else? Mm, we, we talked about freeloader. Freeloader. What's a freeloader? Freeloader. Any ideas? Mm, no. Freeloader. I think the context from the audio today, they were talking about a situation where students were working together, and one student, I think, was complaining about a classmate who was being a freeloader. What do you think? Imagine you're working in a group, in a team, and someone is not doing his or her part. You might say, this person is a freeloader. What do I mean by that? Mm, that he or she doesn't work. Right, and it's not just that they don't work, but they want to receive credit for not doing the work. Okay? Um, right, so okay. a freeloader is not just someone who doesn't do the, the work, but they want to get credit, or at least equal credit, as if they did the work. Okay, so freeloader refers to uh, that situation, right, where someone's not doing his or her job, 
and they want to receive credit. A okay, freeloader. Um, two more real quick here. Now this one you may or may not be familiar with. If you're familiar with the grading system in the United States, they said something like received an A. Received an A. What does that mean to receive an A? You could say also receive a B, receive a C, receive a D. But in the audio, they mentioned receive an A. What does that mean? It is like yes, no? Yeah, it's so in the U.S., an A, you receive an A if you received a percentage grade of 90 to a 100%. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah, it could be a 10. It actually could be a 9, anywhere from a 9 to a, a 10. Uh, sometimes you'll see a minus, a plus. I mean, uh, we have a B. A B typically is 80% to 90 or 89 if you want to get technical. So B is probably 80 to 89, C, 70 and 79. D is usually 60 to 69 percent and then an F we don't know what an F is it's below anything less than 60 percent all right so if you're if you go to school in the United States you might receive a C you could have C plus C minus B plus B minus and so on okay. I got an F in this TOEFL you get an F on a TOEFL. Yeah. <laughs> well, the good. Th well, the thing here is you don't really get an a grade per se, even though I'm sharing with you guys percentages, right? Uh, just to give you an idea. Um, yeah, but it's yeah. So that's usually how um, the grading system works. So if you're listening to audio and they say something like receiving an A, a B, a C, that's kind of that's what they're referring to. All right. Uh, one more. This was at the very be uh, early on in the audio. I forget now what they were referring to, but tour. Oh no, here it is. Tour the play to pieces. They were talking about a play. Somebody said, "Oh, the, I think they said the critics tore the play to pieces." What does it mean to tear to pieces? They tore something to pieces. Any ideas? You can, is it, this, uh, go ahead. You could also say you could tear someone to pieces. Oh, they tore me to pieces. It was horrible. I acted, I performed, and somebody tore me to pieces. I don't know if it means like they gave me a lot of work. Hmm... Think of it like if you were performing, let's say you're a musician, you're a singer, and you sing, you know, you sing a piece of music, then someone could, you could say, oh, this critic tore me to pieces. This person tore me to pieces. Could be in the newspaper. So and so tore me to pieces. What do you no, I don't. I cannot like real como relacionarlo con algo. Any, all right, anyone else? Como que te saca de quicio? Uh, can you say that again? Como que um, te desespera o no sé. It's think of it like a critique. A critique, right? Someone criticized you. So if I sing mm -hmm. Right, if I sing um, an opera piece to the public, for sure someone would cre would tear me to pieces because I'm a horrible singer. They would say, "Oh, he sucks. He's horrible. He's terrible. He has no musicality. It's horrible." Right. So, a tearing to pieces, tearing something to pieces means uh, critiquing, criticizing someone horribly. Horribly, it's, it's like a, critican, pues. mm -hmm. yeah. So it's it's a it's a really negative critique. 
to tear something to pieces. And it can refer to a play. It can refer to a performance. Usually it's a performance, whether it's someone singing or playing, right? Um, but it could also be a play, someone acting, and so on. All right, guys. Um, what I want to do for the rest of today is to give you time to uh, complete the, any assignments that still need to be completed. Um, please make sure, if you have not done so already, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, please watch the video that I uploaded yesterday. I gave a brief review of uh, two assignments that many of you have not completed or had not completed at that time. So please watch this video first. I explained a little bit this morning uh, of trying to offer a team reflection, all right, to finalize your your uh, grade for the performance task. I'm going to go and change the grades once you've completed the task, but try to complete it today so that we can get all caught up. You can also spend today completing your next episode for your podcast, okay, and uh, paying very close attention to preparing well for your podcast, organizing your ideas, trying to think how you want to uh, organize and transition from one idea to the next and try to avoid reading anything, okay? Try not to read anything during your, uh, during your, uh, your episode. All right, so I'm going to be online here. We'll, um, I'll mute my mic for now. We'll come back at 940 to answer any final questions. Of course, if you have any questions or we need to look at something or if you have questions about a specific uh, homework assignment, Now's the time to address those questions. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic and um, we'll come back at 940. Okay, JJ teacher. Okay. Um, if anyone has questions about the team reflection, uh, please let me know. I explained it this morning. Um, I explained it in the video, and I explained it, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before. Um, but we need to upload to YouTube your team reflection. I think the easiest thing to do is to watch the video that I uploaded yesterday in Teams. Okay, but if you guys have questions, uh, let me know um, about, you know, about the team reflection. Okay. All right, guys, uh, to conclude uh, the class here, mm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain again what to do on the team reflection. Uh, if you haven't already, please watch this video. This video was posted yesterday where I explain uh, what I'm going to explain again right now and what I explained this morning before we took the TOEFL exam. All right, and this is how to do the team reflection. All right, so to do the team reflection, let me open up here. I'm going to show you by example. And uh, we talked about this, I think it was either yesterday or day before. No, it wasn't yesterday. It was, I guess, two days ago. Um, this is Team 11's video, okay? I think they were the first team to Hi, upload. Hi, everyone their team reflection okay so what they did um what everyone needs to do is to talk with your teammates to decide on how you guys did what what you did well what were some challenges and the there was a word document that i've shared several times about what you guys referred to when you created your video right about what you needed to do to create a good a video right so you decide on as a team who's going to evaluate what aspects of your performance and then upload a text comment to YouTube each person describing different aspects of your performance both the things you felt you did well things that you found challenging 
It could be also talking about how you prepared for the video, but make sure that you're not talking <clears throat> about all of the same things. But you need to talk first. You need to decide as a team who's going to talk about what so that you're not all talking about the same thing, that you're not all evaluating the same aspects of your performance. So the last step in the performance task is to upload a comment to your YouTube uh, video and offer a, a reflection. And this is an example here. There's some other good examples as well from other groups as they have been completing this last step in completing the performance task. Once you've uploaded your, your reflection to YouTube, right, then that will complete the task. And I will uh, give you your grade at that point. Okay, this is the last step, the, the team reflection, okay? Um, also, I, um, I don't think I told you I was able to get your scores for Monday's review, Monday's TOEFL review, and I just captured the results for today's review. So I'm sending uh, messages to each one of you in chat to, um, to give you your percentage correct for the TOEFL review that we did on Monday and the TOEFL review that we did today. I'm just going to give you two percentages. So if I give you two percentages, the first is from Monday. The second percentage is what we did today. And you can compare th those two percentages with the percentages that you received for week three because we did a, a TOEFL review in week three as well. All right, so this should give you an idea. Now, use these percentages to help you decide on how much more practice you need for, for listening. If you have a percentage less than 50%, 50 percent, five zero, then I would highly recommend that you are taking every opportunity that you have to get in uh, some additional listening. And this can be in various forms, right? Of course, your pod podcast are, is one way, right, to get more practice. If you want to get specific practice from the recordings or from the TOEFL recordings, then use the, the audios that I'm providing everyone to listen to those again. Even though you've already taken the review, continue listening to those examples, all right, there's no magic trick with when it comes to listening or any aspect of speaking a language. It's just practice. It's just listening and listening and listening. All the courses, all of the classes that we have, I try to get a recording for those. I try to upload video tutorials or any type of information that I think will help what we're doing in class. I'm uploading and I'm, I'm including those in our playlist. So remember that we have a playlist specifically for this class under Video Archive. And we have a lot of videos, of course, with the audios. Right? We have many, many, many. We have 60 videos so far this semester. And we've just completed six weeks. That's on the average 10 videos a week. Now, you may decide you don't need to listen to every single video. But let these percentages that you're receiving from the TOEFL help make this decision about how much more practice you need when it comes to listening. And what I would suggest is to listen to as many different types of context and videos as possible, not just certain certain ones, right? Not Maybe not just the, the video archive that we have here, maybe not just your podcast, but maybe some TED Talks right, online videos, informal and formal discussions. There are many lectures online. You don't have to listen to hours and hours, but try to every day get into the habit of listening a little bit to some recording or audio to help with, uh, with uh, listening, okay, because it just... It just doesn't happen, right? It takes it takes a while. It takes a long time, and you have to listen frequently. So if you're getting percentages like 20% or 30%, you're going to need a lot of practice. 
right? And if you are, are practicing, if you are getting a lot of listening in, then be patient and continue doing what you're already doing because it takes time, right? Don't get discouraged, but realize that it, you need the practice. It just, you have to do it. It, it, it. I can't do it for you, you know, and, and it's all up to you as far as how you schedule your time and how much you can dedicate to uh, developing your skill, all right? If anyone wants to talk about specific strategies, one-on-one, let me know. Um, but this is what I would suggest to all of you. The reason why I'm giving you these percentages is so that you have an idea about how much you need to do outside of class. If the only listening that you're getting is from this class, and this is from ev- for everybody, if the only listening you're getting is from this class or live online classes, then you're not, you're not getting nearly enough from this class. You're not, you're not benefiting as that much. You're, you really need to get more listening than what you're getting in our live sessions. I mean, one of the reasons why I'm trying to have a live session every day, of course, is so that you are practicing your listening. But it's, it's not enough. It just, it, it just isn't. Now, the good thing is that you're hopefully speaking a lot in your other classes, uh, English, and certainly that helps. I would try to record as many classes as you can for your own benefit. If you're struggling with listening, record, find a way to record every single class and go back and listen to whatever classes you need to to recall what you missed. In my class, I'm giving assignments. I'm giving instructions for assignments over and over repeatedly, and that's fine. I don't mind doing that. But you guys need to also pay close attention to the instructions. When I'm giving instructions to the assignments, make a note to yourself. Say, okay, at 9.15 on this day, he was giving instructions, and I didn't quite understand everything, so I need to go back and check out the recording or ask somebody, of course. Ask a classmate, but really try to uh, work on your listening comprehension, and it comes from practice. All right, so I'm going to continue right now. I'm going to continue sending messages to each one of you um, privately in the chat in Microsoft Teams with your TOEFL scores for this week. Again, the first percentage is for Monday's exam or Monday's review, I should say. And the second percentage is from today. All right, so we'll stop there, guys. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you on Monday. Take care. Thank you, teacher. 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 Bye. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I have a doubt. Yes. Um, it is just that in the video of my team, we have already uh, uploaded it, but it doesn't appear, or I don't know if you could find it. Okay, what uh, what group or what team are you? Uh, El Locho. Okay, I'm checking right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't, let's see. Is it in week five? Okay, final video. Final presentation. Okay, one second here. Let me check it. Okay. Okay. All right, I see it now. And just give me one second here. All right, I'm uploading. Um, I'm uploading your video right now to the playlist, and you may have to wait a few minutes for it to to render to process. But I just uploaded it, so um, yeah, go ahead. Just wait a few minutes, and then you can upload your reflections uh, to the to the video. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. All right. We'll talk to you later.
Thanks, teacher. Thank You're you, welcome. Teacher. Thanks. Bye, guys. Have Thank you. Thank Bye. you. You too. Take care.